Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and welcome to the Wondershare PDF Element YouTube channel. PDF Element is an all-in-one PDF solution with powerful tools to edit, convert, annotate, fill, and assign PDF documents currently with over 2 million active daily users. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can seamlessly create a fillable PDF. Now, if you're stuck with collecting and dealing with data from hundreds of clients' files and forms, well, don't worry, PDF Element Pro can help you accomplish the tasks to design fillable forms, distribute and collect data easily and more precisely. So let's jump onto the computer and show you this in a little bit more detail. So with the first option, you can actually create a form completely automatically. So right now we have this unfillable form as an example. Go over to form, hit more and recognize form. And then literally with a click of a button, it automatically creates a fillable form for you, which can now all be filled in. If we go over to preview to see what it looked like, and then you can then fill in the form. So very easy and simple. Now, if for whatever reason, the form can't be recognized automatically, or you'd like to create a customized form field, you can pretty much just do this manually yourself. So once we're in the form tab, again, you have all of these options here to manually add things yourself. So we have text fields, we can add image areas, you can add checkboxes, labels, etc., which we'll take a closer look in a second. Adding a text box is pretty much self-explanatory. So you click on this, create a box like so, and then this creates a field where you can add text in. So if you go over to preview, you can click on this and then type in your name. These can all be completely customized as well by double clicking on the box, which gives you some options in terms of like the appearance, the actions, formats. Uh, you can validate, you can also calculate things, uh, which we'll go into detail later on, but that's how you add a text box. You can add a checkbox by clicking on add checkbox. So say in your form, you want someone to tick their option. You can actually hold shift to create a perfect square like so. So let's say you want to have all of these as checkboxes and whoever is filling in your form can tick whichever ones apply to them. So the radio button is a little bit similar. It gives you an option to choose one of the options rather than like a checkbox. So you can again, click on this, just add your option, go over to preview to see what it looks like. And then whoever's filling in your form can choose the option that matches them. Adding a list box allows the user to choose from a predetermined set of options. So again, you can just click on this and create a box. I have one prepared here earlier. So again, if you double click this, go over to the options. Here you can type in all the different choices for your lists. So if I add one more, let's create a fifth package, package five, we'll call this custom. Add it to your list, hit close. And if we go over to preview, you can then select from the five different choices. So the combo box is similar to the list box. It allows you to create a predetermined set of lists, uh, but the user can also enter a custom field as well. So if we create our box here with the combo box, double click, go over to options. So you can add all of your predetermined choices. Make sure you have allow user to enter custom text. And if we go over to the preview, as you can see, they can choose from the options or they can also type in their own choice. Now the push button is a really important button, a very useful tool here, where you can basically create an actionable button. So for example, here it says service required, and then we have a list of different package options for these services. If you wanted to specify and give some more information, maybe have a link to a website, you could add a button here, double click, go over to actions. And for this particular one, I wanted to open a web link, choose the web link, hit okay. Make sure you also type in the name of the label. So you can type in pricing info. Let's change the color as well to make it just stand out a bit more. Let's make it red, hit close, preview. And then now when you click on this, it will take you to our website. There are lots of useful actions here. Maybe you can reset the form if you want to clear everything quickly, or you can also submit the form. So if we hit add, so this will export it as an FDF, uh, either to an address or to an email address. So if you have a business email, choose the data that you want it to receive. Don't forget to add the label as well. So submit form, we'll change this color to 
yellow, for example, hit close. And then once someone has chosen all of their required fields, they've signed and dated, they would hit submit. And as you can see, I've received the data uh, in FDF format. So next up we have add image. This can be really useful if you have a form where you need someone to submit an image for you. So for example, in this order form, we have an option where a client can upload any specific outfits uh, to help us better plan their photo or video shoot. So add the box here. And now when someone clicks on the box, they can then upload an image file. I think it only accepts image files, which will then upload here, just to give you an example of what it would look like. The next useful tool I want to show you is how you can calculate fields for things such as expense reports, anything with numbers. So for example, here we have a budget form. We have all of our expenses here. All of the expenses are text box. And let's say you want to have the total of your expenses listed here. What I can do, similar to what you can do in Excel, what we can do is add a text box here, double click, go over to calculate and then we can choose. So the value is the sum of the product average, minimum, maximum. So we want this to be the sum of, and then we can choose all the boxes that we want it to add everything from one uh, just to number 10, hit okay. And then you'll see that whenever you adjust anything here, it will change the price of the total expenses. You could also do this for a remaining budget. Lots of useful ways this can come in handy. So one of the most important features is adding a digital signature. So again, very simple, just click and create a field where you want the customer to sign. And as you can see, it will say sign here. And then you can either use an existing digital ID from a file. If they haven't got one already, they can create a new digital ID using the new PKCS hash one two digital ID file. Or they can also use a Windows certificate store for their digital ID. Both options are incredibly safe because all of your data is encrypted. Once your ID and password have been created, you can hit sign. It will then save the form as signed. And at the top, you'll see signed and all signatures are valid. If we just zoom in a bit, you can see that the data is all there stored for you already. So this is a convenient and safe way to sign documents digitally. So a few other options that I wanted to quickly show you, the first being numerical fields. So for example, if you want to only have the user be able to input a number, you can actually double click on the text box, go over to format, then you can actually choose what kind of format you want. If it's, for example, just a number, you can hit number. Then you get some options here for your numbers. You can actually choose your decimal places, how the separator is styled, currency symbol if it's involved in price. So let's say I want to include pounds. And as you can see, that box is displayed in pounds. This is especially useful as well for things like the date, for example. If we go over to format, then you can specify the date options, whether you want month date, month date year, or if it's in single digits or double digits. So let's say, for example, here we have MMDDYY to so September the 9th, 30th, 21. And there you have it. And the final feature I want to show you is the multi line text. So at the bottom of this form, we have a little comment box. If we double click this and go over to options. You can select multi line, which allows more text to be shown in the box. So for example, if I uncheck multi line and I type in something here, it's quite a long sentence. So it doesn't show you all of the text. If we go over to edit and double click options and then select multi line, it will show more than one line and you can actually scroll down to see the whole thing. So there are some scenarios where recipients may submit forms as a data only file, such as a FDF format file, rather than the complete PDF file. Thankfully, you can view the data submitted by recipients in the context of the original PDF, just by opening the original PDF and importing the FDF data file. So go over to more and then import data. So we have the FDF file here, hit open, then all of that data will be restored. You can also extract this data by going to more, click on extract data, and then make sure you have extract data from form fields in PDF, hit apply, and it will save it as a CSV file. Hit save, then you can see all of your data here. Filling and signing a form that someone has sent you couldn't be easier with PDF element. You can literally click and sign using the digital ID method, or you can comment and use the signature tool to create a signature 
by drawing, typing or uploading a signature as well. You can save, you can print your signed PDF form and you can send your forms or documents electronically online with Wondershare Cloud. If you want to distribute your PDF forms online, this again is very simple. It's all built in right within Wondershare PDF Element. Just hit file, go to share, and here you can upload your files to Evernote. You can use Dropbox, Google Drive, Wondershare's Cloud, OneDrive, and Box. You can upload it directly to Wondershare Cloud. Uploading it to Wondershare Cloud gives you some great options to see which documents are still waiting for you to be signed, waiting for others. You can see which ones have already been signed. Just makes it much easier to track everything, keep notified and see who has completed what. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you do have any questions, do leave them in the comments section below and check out the links in the description box to find out more and download PDF Element for yourself and see the benefits right now. Lastly, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to see more. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.